gather around the fireplace and grab your hot cocoa, because it's time for a racist Christmas story. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that decided to hop on the movie bandwagon by making Pokemon Part 3, Part 2. Since you've all been such good little theorists, this week is just a little stocking stuffer to hold you over until the big presents arrive over the coming weeks. Call of Duty, Skyrim, Zelda, they're all in the pipeline, and they're pretty big episodes, so forgive me for the last few being a little shorter. But enough looking ahead, today is about black-colored Christmas traditions, and no, we're not talking about coal. So gather around as I read you my favorite Christmas tale, A Very Racist Jinxmas. <clears throat> A Very Racist Jinxmas by Matthew Patrick Our story begins in a simpler time, 12 years ago, winter, 1999, when an episode of Pokemon aired on TV on a long-forgotten station, the WB. It featured Jinx dressed as Santa, stealing toys from the shelves, and showed that the fat man used these things as elves. Creepy, yes, but not unexpected for a show where this went undetected. Holiday hijinks, the episode was called, but some in the audience were quite appalled. One woman complained after the show, That Jinx is a black cross-dressin' hoe! The episode was banned, Jinx's skin changed from black, and all because of some political attack. But was she right? Is Jinx offensive? Perhaps this woman was a wee bit defensive. Because, though we've looked at fashion fads in Norse, this episode may lead us to Jinx's true source. So let's move away from cartoons in Japan to holiday traditions of Belgium and Netherland, where there isn't Santa Claus but rather Saint Nick, Sinterklaas, equipped with his pope hat and stick. This Santa doesn't come with little men in green tights. Instead, his posse comes straight from the heights. Six to eight black men he carries in tow, cast after their gig in hustle and flow. Zwartepeet, Black Peter they're named, and around the lowlands, adults aren't ashamed to blacken their faces and rouge their lips, dress like a page and travel on ships. You see, St. Nick and Peter sail in from Spain, since living in the poles just doesn't seem sane. Zwarta comes first to bring Christmas joy, some candy, a cookie, a neat Christmas toy. But if you've been bad, you better watch out. You better not cry, you better not pout. Or Sinter and Pete will bring out their broom, and beat you with it all locked up in your room. But that's not the worst, oh no my dear child, that's what you get when your sins have been mild. Just wait till you hear what's to be had for the little boy or girl who's really been bad. They're stuffed in a sack, kicking and screaming, hoping and praying that they're only dreaming. Once in the bag, they're carried to Spain, where family and friends never see them again. So let that be a lesson to all of you. Beware of Santa and his urban crew. But back on topic, is Jinx like Pete? Let me pull out the comparison sheet. Black skin, red lips, Santa's helping hand. But that's as far as the similarities stand. And does it matter? Black Pete ain't so great. His racist heritage is currently under debate. Some stories say Zwarta began as a devil, taking black-faced portrayals to a whole nother level. Yes, of course, he's a much-loved tradition, but does that excuse racism post-abolition? Like it or not, hateful portrayals live to this day, and like Call of Duty, show no signs of going away. Lazy Mexicans, smart Asians, the cracker, the Jew. Of racial stereotypes, we know a slew. But the holidays are special, a time of love and peace. A time to sit by the fire playing the latest release. But shouldn't it also be a time when we set aside differences as a single brotherhood of men? Anyway, I'm sure by now of rhyming couplets you're weary, so I'll end with this. That's just me, and my game theory. Merry Christmas. <laughs>